Ekomo Mai, the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu. I'm the Reverend Dr. Jonifer Kuponu Kwong, minister of this congregation. And I don't know if you notice or not, but the world has changed around us. And last time we were here sitting together, um, there were many of you who were here to witness that event back in August. And a few things have happened since then, hasn't it? But I don't know if you noticed when you were driving in or not, the sky actually hasn't fallen. It's still <laughs> intact. And during our wedding, the governor said that um, when he was reading the Dalai Lama, he said that when we practice compassion, a more humane world will come into being. Remember that, those of you who are here for the wedding? A more humane world will come into being. And for me, this doesn't happen by happenstance or accident, but it happens when all of us go deeper and dig deep into our religious traditions and find out how we can address the root causes for suffering. Suffering, after all, as we know, is caused by cravings, desire, and greed, leading to scarcity and injustices. But what's so cool is that there's a group of religious leaders just like you who have come together to say enough already. We will no longer let others speak for us. Yes? So today, we will once again unite based off our common values. So whether we call it the silver rule, have we heard of the silver rule? Do not do unto others what you do not want others to do unto you, right? <laughs> or the golden rule, the one that we've all probably heard of, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There's actually an upgraded version, the platinum rule. Ooh. And this says, do unto others as they would do or have done unto themselves. Yeah, can you imagine that? So in other words, it's not so much a self-centric kind of thing of, let me see. I'm going to guess what Kyle wants to have done unto her based off what I would have done unto me, right? But the world doesn't revolve around me. And it doesn't revolve around Kyle either, unfortunately. Sorry about that, Kyle. This is why today we're writing history once more. Is that an outdated term, writing history? We're picking up our keyboards and typing history here today. And to be honest with you, it's partly because a couple of legislators during the special session tried to divert our attention. Remember that? They said, shouldn't we delay justice once more by talking about homelessness and minimum wage issues? A few of you remember that, yeah? In other words, they wanted to talk about symptoms they certainly were not going to come up with a viable solution for. But notice that they said they just want to talk about it. Well, today we're calling their bluff. We, the progressive clergy, are not a one-hit wonder. We're not chasing after just one issue. But we, rather, are coming up with what we're calling the Historic Moments Project, Meeting Basic Needs Now. All right? Aren't we all excited about that? It's a historic moment, and we're meeting basic needs now. And yes, it's quite ambitious, these eight points we came up with. However, what we're calling PO, this is the acronym for Progressive Interfaith Ohana here, what it means in Hawaiian is ARC. And according to Minister Unitarian Minister Theodore Parker, the ARC, the PO, of the moral universe is law, but it bends towards justice. So that is indeed our hope, and that is indeed what we are working for here today. So before we continue with the program, I'd like to thank a few sponsors who have made today possible, people who, have, um, who help pay for the sustainable and healthy food that we're about to have, um, and also this expensive blown up poster from FedEx office. And, and we want to thank the Reverend Liz Zivanov from the parish of St. Clement in Makiki, and also Pastor Danette Kong from Maui, and Sister Dr. Joan Chatfield, um, who's here today, and also the Reverend Irene Matsumoto from the Palolo Kwanon Temple, who is also here today. 
So let's give them a round of applause. And so we also want to thank those who are not able to be physically present with us. However, do know that there's a hundred clergy throughout Hawaii Nei who support our efforts here today. So I'd like to now invite Kahu Glenn Kila to give us a pule, please. May we all rise and face the sun, please. Mahalo. Naumakua mai kalihiki a kalakau mai kaho kui a kahalawai. Naumakua ya kahina kua ya kahina alo ya kaakau the setting sun. From the highest heavens to the horizon. All of our mothers of children to come, of mothers here and mothers before us. Come forth from the heavens. Cry out through the heavens. Echo through the heavens. Move effortlessly with us. We are your children. Take care of us. Bless our heavens. Bless our earth. Bless Hawaii, our home. Grant us the knowledge of knowing what is good. Grant us the strength to carry on our duties. Grant us the skills to do our job. Grant us divine understanding so that we know what is righteous. Grant us the ability to see what's before us. Grant us spiritual power so that we can bring about positive change. Give us long life. Give us good health. Give us prosperity. For all of us here, for those we love, and for the keiki and kupuna that we serve. Ua kapu keoro nakane, for all life is sacred to our fathers and mothers. Ua mau ke ola ika aina ika pono, for this land is perpetuated in righteousness. Amama ua noa, our prayer is ended. Let it be free and manifest throughout the world. Mahalo. Aloha. Good morning. I like what you did. Could you again stand and face the sun? <laughs> that was beautiful. We ask the Lord of our individual beliefs to bless this wonderful gathering. We're here today to have faith in our many projects we want to help the people of Hawaii in Aloha. Samuel is the recipient this year of Churchill Crossroads um, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Peacemaker Award. I said the other night that uh, you can never do anything by yourself. And certainly uh, I was privileged uh, in my long life of 81 years um, of um, having some great mentors, uh, especially in the days when I was an atheist. <laughs> and uh, the Quakers uh, really came and taught me that uh, there's uh, good in God in every person. And, uh, and that's the message of Martin Luther King, is uh, look for the good in every person, even those who are screaming at you, obscenities, and, uh, more than that, uh, uh, that lasted me uh, all these years. But it's never a person by themselves. It's a community. That's what I'm really aware of. Um, I like to say that Babs can be here today, but she told me she's left-handed. So I'll sign anything with my left hand. <laughs> but we're deeply committed to what you're doing. Uh, 
uh, there's a lot of hope in the world. Uh, we discovered that in our visit to the Holy Land. Uh, it seems intractable what's going on here. Uh, uh, some people say the hatred there has gone on for hundreds of years. You can never solve it. Uh, and uh, I'd like to say, though, then I heard the refrain, uh, uh, there can be no peace without justice. And then someone else added, but there can be no justice without loving one another. And uh, that's the message I heard. Uh, you see that. We saw it also in the graffiti on the walls. Uh, uh, saw one graffiti that someone had put there, probably a child, love one another. And, uh, when the walls do come down, uh, I hope some of those walls will remain for you to like graffiti. That's the message uh, I heard. Uh, but uh, we have uh, uh, walls here in our own community. And uh, here's a litany of them uh, uh, with affordable housing, uh, with gated community, with the prison walls. We have more people uh, in prison probably than any civilized uh, country of the world. And most of them, like the women's prison, 80% uh, are drug offenders. They shouldn't be in prison. Uh, they should be in treatment as they are in Australia, Europe. Uh, so that's what I get. And, uh, um, <coughs> class prepared. Uh, I know Babs is the great prayer warrior in our family. It's a privilege to marry her. But Irene uh, and I both used to give prayers with the legislature. And we're going to ask the representatives who are here to also do their part in affecting legislative change in our community because it takes all of us working together. And so, as you may have noticed around you, we have uh, four House of Representative members here today, and they're all part of what's, co what's called the Future Caucus. And this is a bipartisan group, and so we're not playing favorites here or anything. Um, and so um, I'd like to introduce them, and they'll be saying a few words here and there um, in, the, in, in the following moments here, but um, I'd like to just um, have them rise, please body and spirit as they're able, as I call your name. Representative Chris Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> represents Kailua and uh, uh, Waimanawa, correct? And sitting next to him is Representative Kaniela Ng from <laughs> South And let's see, Representative Nicole Lowen from the Big mm -hmm. Island. <laughs> Finally, we have Represent Takashi, Representative Takashi Ono, who actually represents the New Army. Is it part of downtown as well, or just the Eleven Heights? Right Eleven Heights, right here. So we're thrilled to have all of you here. And what we'd like to actually request and ask you is if you could pass a Charter for Compassion bill here in Hawaii. So as many of you know, uh, cities like Seattle and Louisville, Kentucky, of all places, are, also, are already known as compassionate cities. And so wouldn't it be great that not only are we known as the Aloha State, but also known as the compassionate state, which is really just a synonym for each other. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the Charter for Compassion was um, written by a group of people and spearheaded by Karen Armstrong, who is a wonderful author and in many ways, a theologian in her own right. Chris Lee, would you like to say a few words? It's great to be back again. You know, this, this is becoming kind of a nice routine, <laughs> seeing everybody from time to time. Um, you know, when you talk about the Future Caucus, which uh, was spearheaded by uh, Takashi Ono and our other young leaders. The idea is that we're looking to the future because we're going to be here for decades to come, 50, 70, 100 years from now. And these issues that we talk about today are those that need to be resolved to be able to live out that future in a Hawaii that we all love and that we all prosper together in equally. And I'll be frank, we are relatively young which means we have a lot to learn. And there's a lot of wisdom in this room that we can learn from. But I'll be frank when I say that growing up here, 
And I, I went to Iolani, which is an Episcopal school. And of all my friends, everybody um, generally uh, was raised in the faith of their parents. But for many of us in today's society, it was more routine than ritual. It was showing up, going through the motions, and it wasn't anything that was internalized within us. And the reasons we were there were not the reasons our parents were there, nor the reasons their parents were there before them. And it was especially evident, I think, in the battles where you have generational shift, whether it was marriage equality, this past time, or the 98 Kana and before then, when you had the religious community as a whole come out on very narrow issues at times, which weren't relevant to the generation that was being raised here at the time. And for the first time, that's beginning to change. And an understanding that bridges faith and the values inherent therein with the society around us and the tangible results we see with our neighbors and friends are finally coming together for a lot of us, for myself, who never understood the connection between the two before. <coughs> I think that's why this is so valuable because it was this exercise, partly which opened my eyes just this past year with the marriage equality debate, looking for the first time, not just at an issue that affects us, but at the community, at the leaders, at the players, at the faith community who actually helped, who ensured that this would happen. And it would not have happened were it not for all of you, for Jennifer and everybody else who stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, we are not defined as a community based on this one issue. There is more there. We have compassion, we have respect, and we have an understanding that together we live, whether we agree with each other or not. But hearing for the first time, for a lot of my friends, especially early on, that you know, the typical stereotypical <laughs> block of, of just religious faith community was not automatically opposed to this, which had been kind of the norm and the understanding for our generation for so long was enlightening. And that is what really allowed, I think for the first time, this bill to move and this issue to have, have passed. So that for the first time, people are stepping up to the plate and the community is getting involved in issues that previously, it's not that religious leaders weren't involved, but it's that from our perspective, we didn't see it because there were different issues than the ones that our next generation tended to be involved in. And so to see this behind us, to see these issues, which are common to us all, which are yet to be resolved, which need champions and leaders just the same, and which this community, a faith community, is gonna be instrumental in getting done, is, for the first time, brings together the whole reason why I spent all those years listening to those lessons and engaging with those people. It provides meaning to that. Because I finally understand why those things are important and what they can achieve. It's about us being together. So I want to, I, I can't even vocalize it, I want to say thank you so much because this is about all of us and where we're going. And so I really congratulate you all, and commend you all, and just say thank you so much for being a part of this. And if there's anything we can do to help, well, we'll be there. Mahalo. Aloha, as mentioned, my name is Takashi Ono. Welcome to District 27. It's a great place to be. Um, you know, um, there are a number of us here, a couple of us are freshmen, and one of the questions that's often asked of us um, is why we decided to run for office. And as I look behind me, I look at many of the reasons that answer that question. Before I ran for office, I was in the Department of Education. I was a public school teacher. I taught third grade at Kern Elementary. Kern Elementary is on Middle Street. It's right by Cujillo Park Terrace. Many of the students that come there are new to our country. They don't come from the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, the Philippines, Samoa. And when I think about the work I do, you know, you think about people uh, and families that came across in our classrooms, kids like Shay Lin, or Worsi, or K1, and you think about what their future looks like. You know, undoubtedly, many of these things have an impact on what the child learns. If a kid doesn't see a doctor, 
their kid doesn't have a home, if their kid doesn't have a meal on their table, it's harder to, harder to get them into school ready to learn. Um, but undoubtedly, too, an education impacts your outcome in life, like, you know, for better or for worse. And that drives a lot of the work that I do at the state capitol. I find it horribly unfortunate that we live in a country where a quality education these days seems to have a cost. Sending your child to preschool, moving into a good school district, going to college, these things have costs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, many of these things are not open to my kids like Mercy, K-1, or Shaman. They may have had issues seeing doctors, having food on their table, or finding a stable home. I'm happy that PO is started, that there'll be more focus and energy surrounding this idea. Because when you're a kid, you only get to have a childhood once. You only go to third grade once, fourth grade once. And unfortunately, many of those things cannot wait. So I wish you Godspeed, and the best of luck to PO. Thank you, Reverend, for inviting us. And thank you, everyone, for being here. A lot. I'd like to invite Diane back once again to help lead us in singing the song Standing on the Side of Love. So why don't we do that? Why don't we rise and body and hear the play of all sexuality, which to me was a little bit um, bizarre. I did not 
understand exactly why there's so much emphasis placed on that. And now that that issue is done, we can move on to things that we actually, um, that I think all our, all religions across Hawaii at least are rooted in. So um, yeah, thank you again so much, Jonifer. It was um, an honor to, to be at Jonifer's wedding earlier um, last year. That was uh, what an amazing experience. Uh, we're working on a lot of things this year. One, one push will be um, early education uh, for uh, preschoolers to give them the opportunity. And you know, Takashi Ono, it's been a big focus of his, and he's, he's been really working on uh, educating the rest of the members, including myself. So, um, you know, have his back and, uh, and ask him a lot of questions because he's, he's like a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting uh, me to join you today. And this is uh, my first time here, so it's an honor to be here. I couldn't make it to some of the other events or to the wedding. My, um, I'm a, my name is Nicole Lowen, and I'm a state representative from over on Big Island, so it's a little bit harder for me to stay over here on weekends and things like that. Um, but it does feel very much like coming home, because actually when I was growing up, we went to Unitarian uh, services sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I guess I just, just want to say, since I haven't been here before, throughout special session, it was a really difficult time and a difficult process to sit through. And I haven't had the chance to thank everyone here for how much it meant to us to have your support and how much it helped us get through the difficulty of that, um, to know that there's people from the faith community standing behind us and to have that, that positive voice um, out there. So thank you uh, very much for that. And in the end, justice did prevail. And despite some of that negativity that we had to sit through, I think a very positive outcome was bringing this group together, PO, uh, Progressive Interfaith Alliance. And uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief, but I guess I just want to say I wholeheartedly support um, this basic needs agenda and look forward to working with you in, in whatever way we at the legislature can help to move this agenda forward um, in the future. And, and work towards furthering justice and equality in Hawaii. And I guess I'll just finish with some words from Martin Luther King Jr. since we all just celebrated his uh, 85th birthday last week. Um, so as we work towards this agenda in the future, let's remember that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So thank you all again, and aloha. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. Good to see all of you here today, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much, Reverend Kwan, for inviting us to be here. We are from the Konko Kill community. I am Edna Yano from the Konko Mission of Wahiwa, and assisting me is Reverend Seiko Konko of the Konko Mission of Honolulu. The church is in Liha, on Liha. And this is our son. And I would like to start with a prayer, but before that, I really like how we face the sun. And <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to stand up and do that again, but I thought that was very special and really touching. Uh, because if we wanted to meet the divine, all we have to do is step outside, look up, the sky above is coming, and the ground below is coming. We are surrounded by tremendous blessings and powers of the universe, and that is our uh, divinity. I'd like to start with a prayer to our founder and our divinity. Ikian Konko Daiji and Pinch Kanu Kanu Sama. Ikian Konko Daiji and Sama, Pinch Kanu no Kanu Sama. Ikian Konko Daiji and Sama, Pinch Kanu no Kanu Sama. The religious leaders of the Progressive Interfaith of Hana gather here at the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu this morning in this morning prayer. We seek your guidance and acknowledgement that all we are doing is the right thing to do. Because we are human beings, we are gifted with eight traits or virtues, as mentioned by the Reverend Masato Kawahatsu of the Konko Church of San Francisco. The eight traits unique to human beings are appreciation, calmness, compassion, selfless service, positive attitude, humbleness, patience, and sincere prayer. 
There are no barriers in these traits, and it can translate in any culture. Let these traits be especially heightened in each of us so that we can help create positive change in the state of Hawaii. To ensure the basic needs of everyone throughout Hawaii, we commit to our eightfold path to a more compassionate world. Number one, malama ma aina. Two, healthy and local food production. Three, affordable housing. Four, quality accessible health care. Five, quality education. Six, personal safety and stable ohana. Seven, responsible and effective governance. Eight, economic equality. You have taught us that the light, the sun shines upon us is a divine blessing. So too is a rain that falls. Kami lets all humans live amid divine blessings. People are born amid divine blessings, live and die amid divine blessings. Through Christian ministry. Through your amazing virtue and guidance, we know these prayer of ours will be possible. Please allow us to put our hearts together to create a world of harmony, <coughs> compassion, and kindness. Thank you for all that you do. Shintoism it symbolizes um, to purify our hearts, but I know we've all come in pure heartedness. Mm -hmm. And we all have our goals too. So I don't think there's a need to do that. But let us renew our hearts for this new year. And I uh, will scatter the blessings. I'll give this up like a whisk to whisk around the energies of the universe. Please bow your head. I'm going to invite the Reverend Amy Wake and uh, Sister Dr. Joan Chatfield and Father Drew Kovac from the Inclusive Orthodox Church to please come on forward and read the statement for us.
And what if we had a challenge to folks like the Hawaii Pastors Roundtable, all 200 of them? <laughs>